Hello and welcome to the instructional video for the Burstner Lazeo 736G. Uh, so we'll run through the outside bits and then we'll move on to the inside. So first things first, to open the bonnet on this Fiat based cab, the catch for that is just this here. So that's your bonnet release, we'll go to that uh, in a second. While we're here we'll show you the blinds to uh, d use the darkening blinds for the cab you just pinch these two things together here and then draw this across the side windows just making sure that this bar is kept straight as you're doing so and there's a magnetic strip there that keeps it in position as you're drawing it back again make sure that the bar is going back straight like so and then just push it back in to its slot uh, making sure that these uh, clips are in place very similar uh, thing on the uh, windscreen blinds as well. You just pinch those two together, draw that across. Uh, and again, this has got a magnetic strip across this side here. So you just draw that all the way up to the reversing mirror. And there's a little slot just there that allows uh, this bar to go past the arm on the mirror. Uh, and then you do exactly the same on the corresponding side and they join together with a magnetic strip just here. There is a tyre pressure indicator here to tell you what to pump the tyres up to, but this model actually uses uh, specialist camping tyres that have got reinforced walls, so it's better to refer to the actual tyres themselves. Underneath, this is the passenger side here, underneath there is the charger unit, which charges the leisure batteries up. Um, and there's a bank of fuses on the front of this. You can probably just make make those out there So that's where the 12 volt fuses are and that's the front of the charger unit which is used to Charge up the leisure battery on this pillar here. We have uh, The fuel filler so you need the key to put your diesel fuel in there and then underneath that you've got the add blue uh, chemical <clears throat> that's where that's filled up. So that's just uh, you just unscrew that uh, There's an indication on the cab uh, On the dashboard to tell you when that requires filling uh, Just make sure that that doesn't isn't left as soon as it gives you a warning that it, it's becoming low uh, Refill it because otherwise the engine will go into limp home mode, uh, which you don't want if you're on a long journey <clears throat> So that's the filler make our way to the bonnet there now so there's a catch just underneath there to fully release the bonnet okay so that's the bonnet up you've got your washer fill just in there there's a coolant reservoir there a brake fluid reservoir uh, oil fill there's a dipstick there to test your oil level if you ever need to jump start this vehicle uh, then the earth cable goes onto uh, this nodule here you can see it's indicated that's where the earth goes and then the positive terminal goes onto that metal tab just there so that's how you jump start this motorhome uh, and if you need to jump start another vehicle from it then that's where you put the jump cables you've got a weight plate just here so that's your chassis plate with your chassis number on there uh, that's the main controls for underneath the bonnet Okay, so we'll make our way around the motorhome like so. Okay, underneath this cover here, and there's a key for that, uh, which is, I'll show you which type of key it is. It's that key there. So that, that key that's shaped like that is to uh, uncover the external barbecue point is just here. So it uses a bayonet type fitting and it's got a tap. This is the tap that switches the gas on. And then the bayonet type barbecue fitting goes into the end of there. And to release that bayonet fitting, you just push that collar up uh, and that releases the uh, metal tube or the bayonet fitting uh, from the barbecue point. Next to that external barbecue point, we have an external main socket. So that actually only feeds uh, mains out and you will need an adapter for that. So it's the type of adapter you would use 
when you go on European holidays to convert the two pin to a three pin so that's mains out uh, and then there's a 12 volt socket as well again you will need an adapter for that it's not a standard size of 12 volt um, you can see that it's slightly thinner than a 12 volt a standard uh, sort of uh, cigarette lighter st style 12 volt these are television in and out ports but they're not actually wired up uh, this customer's I think has had a, an aerial fitted which we'll come to in a second so they're they are redundant if you wanted to watch television outside you could have them wired up also you can put a, a cable feed into the motor but they're they're not wired up at the moment uh, next to that we have the exhaust for the boiler so when the boiler uh, is working uh, mainly on gas you'll see uh, heat rising from this and, and probably some steam and it condensates on the side of the van it, it, it's nothing to worry about that that's perfectly normal so that needs, needs to be kept clean and free of debris so that's the vent uh, for the uh, boiler uh, we've got the main habitation door we'll go in in a second once we've been through the outside stuff so um, uh, that's that these here are vents for the fridge so uh, what that does is it draws cool air in at the bottom and vents warm air out of the top uh, again just need to be kept clean and free of debris uh, when you're washing the motor just make sure that if you're using a hose pipe try not to spray up Woods into these vents because they're designed for water to flow uh, down them as you can see from the shape uh, so they're vents for the fridge it is possible to buy uh, weather covers for those so in uh, very windy conditions um, you can buy a cover that will go over the top of that um, but yeah only only for uh, high wind conditions uh, and if it's in storage mainly to stop uh, insects and things getting into those vents Moving on along then we have the garage, uh, so in here that's just the box from a Motom Wi-Fi system that we've had fitted for the customer, the box for the aerial that we fitted, a uh, set of carpets, these uh, backing cushions here are required uh, for when you're making the seat belted seats up so the front of this motor is configured in a lounge formation and these are required to um, accommodate the seat belts uh, you can see the two bars at the bottom here and when we go inside i'll show you where they slot in so you can see their their back rests for a seat belted uh, seat in the passenger compartment uh, we've got a light in here which is switched on the light itself uh, and there's a mains uh, 13 amp three pin socket there these are just chocks uh, they're not they, they, they're not designed for leveling they're just if you're on a slight hill or you don't want the motor to roll uh, they are just placed behind the wheels and it stops the vehicle from moving when it's in a parked position you've got the winder for the awning which is just there that goes into that receptacle on the side of the of the awning itself there but there is a separate video on how to use that Thule awning on our youtube channel uh, i'll try and remember to uh, put that video in the description for this particular demonstration uh, so we'll work on around the motor <clears throat> so the reversing camera is located just here it's important that that lens is kept clean uh, if it's really wet conditions you will get water on that lens and it just gives a distorted vision but usually when you move off uh, that water dissipates and you'll get a, a proper image through your monitor so around this side we've got the other side of the garage uh, in here we've got the toolkit and there's just some uh, scatter cushions and a throw for the bed again we've got the other side of those uh, seat backs that are required to make up the belted seats these all these doors have a retaining catch on them and you can see that sort of half moon shaped plastic lug there goes into there and that keeps the door shut like so okay next cabinet along is the toilet compartment so there's an indicator on the toilet itself 
to tell you when that requires emptying um, but you can actually see down into the toilet um, and, and see the level of the liquid and um, so to empty this you open the hatch up lift this handle like so slide this out and then in theory this would be full of toilet waste then and to empty it you slide this nozzle across open the cap off the end like so and then you turn the whole thing round the other way so this is at the bottom and allow the toilet waste to flow out of this tube as you're doing so press this button in here it lets air into this end of the cassette uh, and the liquid go out of there to it prevents splashing this this cassette requires a chemical to break down all the toilet waste get rid of the smells and all the solids it breaks all the solids down so to do that you just slide this back like so open the uh, there's a valve inside there so you to open that you just slide that back you probably see that that's opened it up there you once it's empty you put the required amount of chemical into here and just line the bottom with a little bit of water and then it's ready to use again if uh, if you want to before you put the chemical in you can fill the cassette back up with fresh water give it a swirl around and then empty again uh, and then obviously put your chemical in once you've cleaned the contents out uh, this has got wheels on it so that it can be wheeled over to the, the disposal point the wheels are just there and then this handle doubles up uh, as an extension so then you can wheel it over to the disposal point uh, and also that keeps it in its position when it's in the side of the motor home. so to put it back in slide that back in like so put your wheels on the runners which are just there slide this back in just make sure that that orange handle has gone back into its little receptacle there next to that we have the gas locker now this particular customer has asked us to fit a gas low system but they're swapping it over from their uh, trade in the motum that they're trading in so we're just waiting for those bottles to arrive uh, you can see that the filler point is there but this this particular customer will be aware of how to use that because they've already got it on their existing motor uh, and they're just the bits that are required to uh, to fit those bottles you'll see a sticker there that is to indicate where the waste tank is to empty the waste tank on the side of this cabinet here there's this little handle so you just remove that put this handle onto that bar like so uh, and then let's put it in that position and then to to empty it uh, it's anti-clockwise to empty it clockwise to close it so I'm going to leave that in the open position now uh, so that's what that handle is for there uh, if you get into the sort of most uh, waste disposal points the the gray water which is in, in this tank here is usually over a cattle grid type thing so you you drive your van over the over the grid and if you line it up with this locker here over the grid so between that locker and this wheel then you know that the the uh, pipe is located in the right position to uh, drain it down and the, the water actually comes out of this grey pipe just here put that back on this is where the mains electric comes into the motorhome so um, your standard outdoor cable goes on to here you lift the lid off the cable itself so you lift the lid up and that lid slides into that area there um, and then that's your, your mains inlet into the motor so that's where your mains power comes from in this cabinet here <clears throat> we have the water tank so to fill the water tank you remove this nozzle here this cap and then to prevent any spillage into the locker you've got this little flap there so you put that on and then put your hose pipe into there and it just prevents spilling into uh, into the locker you've got access into the tank if you want to clean it and it, you just unscrew this here if you're going to do that make sure that this is put back on tight because obviously this is then going to be full of water and you don't want water seeping out of this seal here it's got an o-ring on there so you just need to make sure that o-ring is properly sealed to drain the water out of this tank um, in winter or whenever you're not using the motorhome 
more so in winter if water's left in here and it freezes it will expand inside the tank and damage the tank and the associated pipework there's a tap on top of the tank which you'll just see here uh, so if you turn this tap fully anti-clockwise you just heard that click there and I'll, I'll explain that in a second once it's gone past that click just continue to turn it until you get the second click and that will fully drain all the water from this tank the reason there's a little click there and the purpose of this sticker is that you can drain the tank down to 20 litres so the first click was indicating that it's gone down to its 20 litre uh, drainage point uh, the tank will hold 120 litres the reason for that a 20 litre drain is that so that you can calculate weight so 20 litres is exactly 20 kilograms of water so that's the reason for uh, the drain down there uh, to close that valve off and allow the tank to retain its water you just screw that clockwise until it's finger tight also in this cabinet here we have a drain for the boiler which is just here this is actually thermostatic, um, so if it senses the temperature has dropped to 6 degrees or below, it will automatically drain all the water out of the boiler. That's a safety feature to protect the boiler. Uh, again, if water is left in that boiler and the associated pipework and it freezes, it'll expand, it will crack the pipework and damage the plumbing. So, to close this valve, this is now in the open position, to close this valve, you turn the diamond lever on the top there so that it's facing that way turn the diamond so it's facing that way and then I don't know whether you can see this but there's a little blue there's a little blue uh, button on the side of it just there so you press that button in um, and that fully closes the valve okay so that's the valve fully closed if you come to it and this is turned round like so probably means that the temperature's dropped it will also sense if the battery is becoming low and it will also do the same it will drop all the water out of the boiler if the battery becomes low that valve there that little yellow tab just there is to drain the water out of the remaining pipe work so in the up position like it is there that is open so you must close that before you start uh, using any of the water systems on the van so that's open that's closed okay so to use the motorhome and get all the uh, plumbing system working that yellow valve must look like that the diamond must be in that position and the little blue button on the front of that uh, valve there must be pushed in okay so that concludes the outside of the motorhome I'll, uh, I'll go inside now and show you the controls inside the vehicle okay so here we are inside the motorhome then um, so first things first, this lounge area, as I said, is configured in a, a lounge arrangement. Um, it will take seat belts, and you can probably see here, you've got the seat belts, and then the re uh, receptacle for the other end of the seat belt just is hanging down there at the moment. So you take these cushions off here, and then that seat, which I showed you, has got two prongs in it that sit down into two holes which are here. So I'll just take those cushions off and show you. Okay, so with the cushions removed, you can see <clears throat> that there's uh, there's this metal section here. So those little t two little bars that were on the bottom of those uh, seat backings that I showed you in the garage, they sit down into there. So one goes into there, one goes into there, and then you end up with the backing of the seat in this uh, area here. So your seat back comes up like that, and then obviously you can use the seat belt. Uh, across you like so uh, there's a, a little button there so to hold the uh, seat back in position there's this little thing here so you just pull that out and it's that pin goes into a corresponding hole on the on the leg that sits um, uh, that is on uh, that so that pin goes into a little hole which is on the on the leg that goes into there so that's how the seat back works. There's a cushion that actually sits inside the um, seat back itself. Uh, and then you use this cushion here to sit on there for the base of the seat. 
when the passenger is uh, sitting in this area here the legs need to go down here so for that reason that lifts up and then you can probably see there's a catch there that holds that board in that position like so and then if you probably see under here if you lift these little legs down here it allows you to then fold that flat so you've got the uh, passenger sitting in this area here with the legs down there and then the seat back in this position here so that that's exactly the same uh, on on the on the other side here so you just take those cushions off uh, perform that operation and then uh, you've got seat belts for two passengers in the back underneath here is the boiler uh, that's that's where the boiler's housed uh, for the heating of the water and the um, motorhome itself so I'll just put those cushions back on okay so that's the cushions back on there just uh, moving forward on here the these are captain's chairs so they'll um, meaning that they'll swivel around to get those to swivel around there's a little catch here so when they're in the forward facing position they'll uh, they clip uh, into position so that they're uh, fixed in the forward facing position to release those you just flick that to one side like so and that will allow you to swivel the seats around on the driver's seat you do need to go forward and back on the um on the bar that's underneath the the seat so you need to sort of like go forwards and backwards to get you past the steering wheel to get this this the seat back around the uh, the steering wheel um, it's easier on the passenger side because uh, you don't have the steering wheel to contend with this is just the box that the uh, tracker was in so the customers had a security tracker fitted which we've done um, so that's just the box for that uh, this table is adjustable and it's also a leaf table so the way that works is that you pull this supporting bar out like so and then the leaf table goes across like that if it's not quite level you can adjust these little screws on here to heighten one side um, and that just pushes back in like so okay so this table as well it'll slide uh, from front to back uh, there's a locking mechanism on that so to release that locking mechanism it's just this little lever here so that will then allow you to slide the table forward and backwards you can see there it goes from side to side uh, so it'll go that way as well as from front to back these are just the instruction manuals and associated paperwork for all the appliances that are just here uh, and there's some sheets there as well for the uh, for the beds so this side of the seating uh, it might be a little bit easier when I explained about the water tank uh, you've got a little bit of an easier access through into here so you can see that tap on top of the water tank that just is the uh, where the water tanks housed so I showed you the service locker on the outside there where that tap is but if you want to access it from inside uh, then you can just under there over the top of the lounge area here we've got this bed which lowers electrically and you do that by pressing these buttons on here uh, you do need this key in position so that's just a safety feature so you put that key in turn it that way like so press this button here and the bed comes down uh, so you've got sort of safety cargo net in there if you've got small children and it just uh, is a safety feature to maybe stop them uh, coming out of the side of the bed so the bed the bed's down there uh, underneath this locker here this is a double floor motorhome so underneath this locker here is the ladder uh, and you can see it's got feet on it there and then this ladder simply clips onto the ladder clips onto these little clips here and then that allows access up onto the bed okay so working on around the motorhome home then um, we have the oven in here so you've got your igniter switch just on the side of that uh, this clip here to it's a safety thing to stop the the oven opening you actually push that up to open the oven uh, so you can see there that's the oven uh, so 
you've got your control on the side here sorry that's that's a light for the oven and then it, it ignites automatically when you push this in underneath here we've got a main circuit breaker so that's like your domestic circuit breaker that you would see used to seeing at home uh, so um, basically it's just a safety feature if you've got a problem with any of the appliances then these will trip down like so um, so you can actually test that you've got a main supply coming into the motorhome by pressing that test button which is just there that, that little one and then these will flip down so when you press that button that they flip down and then you know that you've actually got mains coming into the motorhome so it's just a test button on the on the circuit breaker there so hob fairly straightforward there is an igniter button on it just another tip when uh, in winter conditions if it's really freezing cold and you've emptied all the water out of the tanks leave these taps open um, because what it does is it lets air in as uh, the water is draining out of the tank which is just there so leave those open uh, the same applies for the bathroom taps as well uh, leave those open and it lets all the um, minuscule amounts of water drain out of the tap because that's where it'll um, gather and then it'll freeze inside those taps okay so on the other side of the motor here we've got a bank of light switches just there the main control panel uh, it's this one here, so you switch the whole motor on by pressing that button there. Uh, and then all your lights and everything will come on. Um, this button here is to uh, give you a quick fix on where your, what your battery condition is for the um, leisure battery. So you've got a picture of the back end of the motor on there, I don't know if you can see. So you press that button, um, it gives you an indication on this side here to tell you what your battery condition is and then that's the front of the motor so that's telling you about your cab battery this one here is for your fresh water level i'm pressing that and nothing's happening so there's no water in it we've just uh, we've just gone to the water tank and there's no water in there and that is your waste water tank so you press that and then the water levels are read it uh, gives you a readout on this side this button here is for your water pump so that switches your water pump on and pumps all the water from your tank through all the boiler and the uh, pipe work and eventually out of your tap. When you first put water into the motor, what you need to do is switch this pump on, ensure all the valves are closed, which I've already shown you. Go to your tap, open it up on hot first and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap. Uh, it'll splutter away uh, and then you'll eventually get a good flow of water coming out of the tap. The reason for that is you're basically filling up the boiler so you're pumping water from that tank uh, around all the pipe work eventually filling up the boiler which is underneath there and eventually that will come out of your tap so don't switch the boiler on until you've done what we call that purge system by uh, pushing all the air out of the pipes until you get a pure flow of water out of your tap so that brings us on to the controls for the heating and the hot water which is this control panel here so switch this on press Press the wheel, which is this here, in the center, and you turn this wheel and it'll allow you to scroll through the menus. Okay, so the first one here is a picture of the motorhome, so that's your motorhome eating. To go into that, you press that button in the center again, and that allows you to adjust the temperature that you want the motorhome to be. So I'm going to leave that on off for now. And then if you scroll the wheel again, you'll come to a picture of the water thermometer, so that's your water. So that's dealing with your hot water. Again, to go in that menu, you press that button. It'll allow you to have eco, which is 40 degrees, hot, which is 60 degrees, boost. What that does is it takes all the energy away from heating your motorhome and attributes it to the heating of the water. Um, so you want a lot of hot water very quickly and you're not bothered about heating, leave it on boost. To come out of any of these menus, you press this back button here okay Sorry. so I'm gonna go back to the water one and turn that off the next one along to the water as you can see it's flashing there is your uh, fuel so it lets you select which fuel you want to use for the heating of your uh, motor and the water so first one is gas 
if you wanted to select that you'd just press the wheel in the center next one along is a mix of gas and electric on one kilowatt electric the next one along is a mix of gas and two kilowatt electric the next one along is electric only on one kilowatt and then the final one is electric only on two kilowatts so i'm going to come out of that menu next one along is just a picture of a fan it will allow you to uh, just vent without any heat so that's what that uh, vent system does so it just blows cool air around the motorhome next one along here is um, you can set your timer so you can set it to come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time and that one sets your clock to switch this control panel off you just give it a long press on the wheel that's the control panel off you've got your fridge underneath that to open the door on the fridge push that catch across that way and that allows you to open the door on the fridge and to switch the fridge on it's that button there okay so this is a three-way fridge it'll run on 12 volt from the uh, engine when the engine's running gas or mains electric it'll also let you use an auto um, select mode so it'll automatically select the most relevant power source it'll try and find electric first then gas then 12 volt you can select your um, power source by pressing the mode button here so if you leave it on auto it'll go through those power sources and select the most relevant one this is your temperature control so in really hot weather you want the fridge to work harder in really cold freezing conditions you don't want the fridge to work that hard otherwise it'll ice up just leave it on a lower setting to switch that off it's a long press again on the power button okay so working on along here we've just got the shower uh, fairly straightforward it's just a mixer tap for the shower uh, i would travel with the shower head like that you know and not not hung up if you leave it hung up on there and it falls it can um, damage the shower tray if it falls on there um, while you're traveling you've got a hanger here if you've got wet clothes you can leave those to drain and obviously drips will just go down into the shower tray <clears throat> Uh, the door there just closes to blank off the front area of the motorhome and then in here we've got the bathroom area so the toilet and uh, when the toilet cassette's full this little light will illuminate here that's your flush button so to use the toilet lift the lid up and um, make sure this valve is closed here while you're traveling but to use the toilet you open this valve here by oh this has got the tape on there uh, you just open this valve by sliding it across like so and that opens up the valve so to use the toilet then open the valve up use the toilet press the flush button and then close it back up using this slider valve here uh, so that's the door closed you can actually uh, isolate the bedroom area off by pressing that little catch in there and then this sliding door will come across like so and then slide into position like that the bed will uh, push up that way so that it allows you to get around the bed uh, more easily and then to make the bed slightly longer you just drop that cushion which is just there in at the back when you've pulled this handle forward just here under here so you pull the bed probably see that's moving there and slot that cushion into uh, that area there to extend the bed okay so that concludes the demonstration video and um, we filmed this before the customers collected it's not been validated or anything the motorhome so uh, obviously we'll get those preparations uh, done for you if you have any questions i'm happy to answer those before you collect or indeed on the day that you collect your new motorhome and we uh, we look forward to seeing you on the happy day that you collect this love so just one final note and uh, just regarding this bed uh, because it's an electrical uh, appliance basically if uh, if your battery ever goes flat or there is a problem with the motor or you get some technical issue with the bed 
there's an override function on this so you can see that little like an allen key and then they provide this winder for you so if you need to wind the bed up manually um, should you have a an issue um, bringing the bed down or getting it back up due to a 12 volt fault then you put that key basically into there and it'll allow you to wind the bed uh, up and down using that wheel uh, like so um, so yeah just one thing I forgot uh, forgot to mention there so uh, yeah that's uh, that's uh, a feature that's um, handy should you uh, have a, an electrical problem with the bed